Hello there and welcome to another spectacular performance, a magnificent show in our Zoomer Hall concert series brought to you by Healthy Planet, Live Life Healthy. I'm Bill Anderson, happy to be with you today as we present the world's most famous brass ensemble. Their unique mixture of great music and fabulous fun has thrilled audiences all over the world. Let's say hello to Canadian Brass. Zoomer Hall with Canadian Brass, and let's meet the guys uh, playing trumpet is Caleb. Say hi. And next to him, playing trombone, Achilles. The man in the middle with the tuba. That's Chuck. And another trumpeter is Chris. And playing horn, and later probably telling bad jokes, is Jeff. And Jeff, I want to start with you because you're sort of the newest member of the Canadian Brass, but you're also one of the oldest members of... What is that story, please? And so I played for five years and then met somebody and wanted to leave the road and stay home for a while, so I got married and uh, then after a few years came back to the group and then we had a child and so I wanted to stay home again, but now my wife asked me if I could go back on tour. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of life stories. <laughs> Well, we're glad that you're back, and I know you're very excited about being back with Canadian Brass. Uh, you uh, did a show, as I mentioned, uh, to our studio audience uh, just before we came on the air, uh, up in the Southern Georgian Bay area last night. You're on to Windsor uh, after we finish here. And uh, does this mean, and Chuck, I'll ask you this, uh, that uh, we're going to be seeing more and more Canadian Brass shows in Canada? Because you've been everywhere else in the world. We have. I, I think our, our career kind of led us to the United States first, which is... It's kind of an obvious move, and then a lot of uh, European concerts, and then we added Asia, and it's all kind of a natural thing. And then uh, my wife said, "Time to come back to Canada." So um, here we are, and we're ready. To you play. guys obviously take direction very well. <laughs> Very much so. Well, we're here mostly to hear you play some great music, and we're going to talk more as the show goes on about uh, what's happening with recordings and what's happening with future tours and things like that. But I'd like to have you take us back to the Baroque era and tell us what you've chosen. Well, we took two pieces from water music because the, um, it's kind of the base of our music. We kind of started there, and we're returning again. Another thing that we're returning to is that it's, uh, uh, it's very timeless music, perfect for 96.3, of course. Uh, this timeless uh, plug, entity. Plug. And then uh, we added in this uh, an Italian Renaissance piece, Damagella Tutabella. Now, there's no real good historical reason or even musical reason to put these together, but they just sound wonderful together, so we did it. And uh, the Damagella arrangement was made for us by Caleb, and it has a very unusual uh, ending, as you will soon hear. So three works from some era that we put together. All right, it's Baroque music. It's with our special guests live in Zoomer Hall. Once again, Canadian Brass. Thank you. 
Great music and a lot of fun. That's what they're all about. Our special guests here live in Zoomer Hall, Canadian Brass, and there's lots more to come right after this. Welcome to Zoomer Hall. I'm Bill Anderson, and we're here with our very special guests today, Canadian Brass, and they're going to entertain us next with some very familiar music by the German Baroque-era composer Johann Sebastian Bach. I'm pretty sure you'll all recognize the Little Fugue. Take it away.
A simply wonderful sound from our special guest in Zoomer Hall, Canadian Brass. Uh, they played the Little Fugue by Johann Sebastian Bach. Next, I'd like to uh, chat about the recording activities of Canadian Brass. And uh, Achilles, I'm going to ask you to pick up the microphone over there. And uh, we do realize that uh, Canadian Brass has released some 130 albums and sold over 2 million copies worldwide. Do you believe that? I mean, it's true. It's just been an amazing run. But I want to know what's happening next. Well, the, actually, there are 137 albums. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> And our latest album was called uh, Perfect Landing, which uh, has music from Renaissance up to actually brand new compositions. Actually, it's the album that has the great piece by Caleb called White Rose. I was about to call it White Elegy because it's very sad and very passionate. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. But our, uh, we're actually currently working on a new album. And it's very important to us because we recorded in two different uh, locations. Half of the album was recorded actually here in Toronto in Heliconian Church, which Canadian Brass recorded uh, one of their most famous albums called Direct to Disc in 1977. So we were back, I mean, not us, we weren't born. No, I didn't think so. But Chuck was. <laughs> Chuck was there. Uh, where the group recorded one of the most important albums and uh, the rest of the album was recorded recently, actually uh, about two weeks ago at Ball State at a beautiful, at a beautiful hall. Uh, what was the name? Sursa. Sursa, Sursa Hall. This beautiful. is in Indiana. In, the US. in Indiana, yeah. right. And again, this album has a lot of selections from Renaissance up to new compositions. But we also, on this album, we're going to include music uh, from Latin America, some brand new, beautiful arrangements, including music by Antonio Lauro, who guitar players play his music a lot, and music from Brazil, and, and everything you can imagine is on this album. <laughs> and when will our audience be able to hear this on my radio station? You will be the first one to All get right. it. <laughs> we'll play. <laughs> you just get it to me. The album is recorded, so we're in the processing of uh, final editing and mixing now. Well, that's exciting news, and we're very happy about that. I want to talk to you about the instruments you play. Now, a violinist, uh, a cellist wants an instrument that's two or three hundred years old, the, the Stradivarius, of course. Brass instruments, what's the story there? And uh, let's, let's go to uh, Chris and find out an answer for this one. Uh, you don't want the 200-year-old trumpet, do you? Well, actually, we do want the two- or 300-year-old instrument, but back in that time period, there were no valves. So we, were pretty, we would be pretty limited to what we could play. So just because of the evolution of the instrument is so recent, we're sort of forced to play newer instruments. And of course, wood uh, ages differently than brass does. It doesn't change as uh, much as you might expect the sound. But over time, you know, we've at least been told that these instruments, after being played by really incredible musicians, increase their value and sound over time, which is apparently debatable if you've been reading recent research. But with brass instruments, it seems that uh, the, the newer designs just seem to be making minor improvements over, along the way. And so how often do you want to replace your instrument? Well, if it was up to me, I'd have a new instrument every day, but um, <laughs> um, they last a long time if you take good care of them. Of course, we travel a lot, so they, they take a beating. So regarding instrument, we had a friend in the Toronto Symphony, and on one of the moving days when they're going from one concert hall to another, the stagehands dropped the bass, smashed the smithereens, oh my and they goodness. said, Oh, Mr. Monaghan, you needed a new bass anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so let's make sure you don't drop that trumpet as you're leaving, Chris. Although it's a good idea. Let's hear some more music. Uh, what are you going to play for us next? And uh, Chris, we'll keep it with you because you've got the microphone. Uh, this is a piece called Vals Paraguano. It's actually part of our Latin American journey. It's uh, by Enrique Crespo, who you can tell does sound Latin American, but he's actually from Uruguay. But he wrote this while he was living where he still lives in Stuttgart, Germany. So it may very well be the most Canadian waltz you've ever heard. All right, and you're gonna wrap it up with a little Mozart, so let's again put our hands together and say welcome Canadian Brass live in Zoomer Hall. Thank you. 
A famous piece of music by Mozart. Uh, we know it as the Rondo alla Turca. Canadian Brass, our very special guest, live in Zoomer Hall. And we'll continue with more. We're going to talk about life on the road a little bit after this. We're live in Zoomer Hall with the Canadian Brass, and they're going to treat us now to their own very special rendition of the classic Amazing Grace. A unique arrangement of uh, Amazing Grace done as only they could by Canadian Brass. Now, 
These guys are renowned throughout the world, not only for their musical performances, the entertainment they bring, but for the wonderful work they do in educating a new generation of musicians. And I'm uh, going to call on Caleb now to talk a little bit about what you guys were doing over the last few days of last week uh, in uh, Ball State University, which is in Muncie, Indiana. What was going on? Absolutely. Well, not only were we in Ball State for the recording session and some videos, which you'll see soon on YouTube, uh, but we were also working very closely with the students there, um, the brass students, in collaboration and performance. We played a piece with the wind ensemble, and we also hosted some master classes and coachings. And the thing about Canadian brass is that education has been a central part of the mission of the group since the very beginning, since 1970. And all of us, four of us, actually <laughs> grew, grew up listening to Canadian brass. Yeah. Any serious young uh, aspiring brass player um, grows up with these recordings in their blood. So uh, for, for all four of us, it's a real honor and also big responsibility to continue that legacy. So um, education is essentially part of every tr tour that, that, we, uh, that we do, whether it's in, here in Canada or all across the U.S. or even um, across the world. And uh, Japan especially. We're in Japan all the time doing educational classes. And it's, it's really great to see, no matter where we are in the world, that spark in young musicians' eyes um, and when they're inspired and when they are uh, really motivated. And what is the future? Or in other words, is your job safe? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's been a really great journey, and I think we're going to continue to push education. Um, it's, it's just so important to all, all of us individually. And there's some great young players coming up, yeah. though, aren't there? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing to see the... The, the skill level and how it grows every year as well. And uh, as uh, we, were heard, we heard earlier from Chris, uh, the instrument's improving all the time. Uh, a future is bright indeed. And Canadian Brass, you know they've been part of the past. They will be part of the future. You guys do spend a great deal of time on the road. And even couples sometimes have trouble being on the road together. What do five people do? How? And uh, I'm going I'm to start with you, Chuck, but everybody can chime in if you want. Uh, how do you guys stay friends, having to deal with the stresses and strains of travel. Well, I'll back up a few years. The group started when uh, you still only had one phone, usually in a room, and uh, very often you had to find a pay phone to even stay in touch with people. Well, that's changed a lot. Now it's easy for everybody to stay in their families. Chris has a young child. Uh, Jeff has two kids. Not yet. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's much easier now to stay in touch, and that helps a lot with the touring because we still feel like we're connected uh, where we live as well. And as far as staying friends, we have such a mission in front of us that, that that's the, the bond. So no matter what else is going on, we have to figure out the next piece of music, the next location, the next people we need to meet. It's constant, so that keeps, keeps it vital. It's a constant team effort, in other words. Well, we thank you for making that team effort and making all the travels that you do. And we want you to play a little more before we run out of time on the show today. Uh, Chuck, what's next on the agenda? Uh, we're going to play Beale Street Blues. Now, that's a little later Dixieland uh, moved up to Memphis. So it's just right on the cusp of when Dixieland was becoming jazz, that particular moment, a wonderful moment. And then our showpiece, the uh, Saints Go Marching In. Uh, we played this for the Queen of England. You all know we played for the Queen of England? Anybody here not know that? Because <laughs> if you don't, that means you're not on the uh, CanadianBrass.com or Facebook or YouTube. <laughs> so uh, we did And that's how long she's been queen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So for her, we played the Hallelujah Chorus, her favorite piece, and our favorite piece, Saints Go March In. We simply put them together. So we'll do that for, uh, we'll do that for this half. Uh -huh. okay, and we'll do it for everybody. All right. right. And the queen, if you're watching. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Zoomer Hall, once again, make a welcome, Canadian Brass. Thank you. 
When the saints go marching in and the hallelujah chorus blended as only they can. How about another great round of applause for our very special guest in Zoomer Hall, Canadian Brass.
Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's always a pleasure to visit with you. Come back anytime. You know the invitation's always there. And I know that all you folks, both here in the studio audience and uh, watching the streaming online and listening on the radio, have enjoyed our show today. Brought to you by Healthy Planet. Live life healthy. I'm Bill Anderson. Look forward to seeing you next time right here in Zoomer Hall.